Mm. 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 Oh well. How are you? So the other day I installed my faces for the cabinets, kitchen cabinets. I did the one inch square box tubing. So now that the metal trim is on my kitchen cabinets, I'm basically ready for a countertop. But there's one thing I need to do before I do that, and that's my backsplash. I want my backsplash to run down behind the countertop so the countertop will run into it. So in this video we're going to be doing some arts and craftsy type stuff for a backsplash. It's going to be pretty unique, I think. I'm going to be doing all this work out in the shop and then I'll bring the finished pieces in and install them. But first thing I did was just measure this space, measure my outlet, measure this outlet. And the backsplash is going to run all the way across to here. Can you see this point? Yeah. It's going to run all the way to here and it'll be right here and it'll probably stop right here. I took extremely detailed measurements and I'm going to cut the pieces and I'm going to come and test fit them and then I'm going to go and finish them. It's a tiny kitchen. It's a tiny house. Shut your mouth. So what I'm going to be using for my backsplash is a 16th inch steel. It's not 16th inch. I think it's like a gauge. I think that's 14, maybe 12 gauge. I'm not sure. Pretty heavy, but I'm only using a little bit of this sheet. I did buy a 4 by 8 sheet. I've already cut out one piece. I'm going to do that other smaller piece right now. I'm going to mark it out with a black sharpie and a uh, straight edge and stuff like that. And I'll be cutting it with a angle grinder with a metal cutting disc on it. Pretty simple stuff. Lots of sparks. I did buy safety equipment though. Sweet. Look at this. We are safetying it. Oh, I'm excited about safety. The other day I got a chunk of metal in my eye. I, I know I deserve it. A lot of you have always commented you need safety glasses, but I got a chunk of metal. I blinked right before it hit my, my eye part, the cornea, but it ended up getting pinched in between my two flappers and it burnt the top and the bottom and it sucked. It was only like two or three days of discomfort, but safety ying. God almighty. So I already cut that one piece and if I miscut that piece by a little bit and then I cut the other piece, which I want to use that corner to have some straight edges on that piece and I screwed up on that one, I won't be able to cut another one of those. So what I'm gonna do is go and test that one real quick. If it fits, then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna cut that smaller one. If I screw up on that, I'll be able to cut up another I'll be able to cut another one here. So I don't wanna I don't wanna screw myself since it's it's not cheap. I mean I honestly hate the smell, the taste, the texture of metal. It's just nasty. I'm sorry if I'm offending some of you, but I don't like it. I like wood. That's a scrap. Uh, 17 and a quarter dot 21 and a quarter dot 24 and 3 eighths. 30 and a half and a quarter. 21 and a quarter. I got the marker wet. That's it. It's over. So here is where the arts and craftsy starts. So I don't want to make this metal look like the rest of the metal in the house. I feel like it's just too much of a spot to have that type of like a black finish on it. So I was thinking of making it rust, like a rusty metal, and then I'll trim everything out with the black. I think it'll be a good contrast. I believe what's on this is called scale. I could be wrong, but it's there's almost like there's something, a film on top of the metal that you need to remove to make it rust. Uh, I did cut a little piece and I wire brushed one and then I angle grinded the other side of it and I put water on it. The side that I did the angle grinding on got more rust than the other one but I don't like the finish that it leaves underneath the rust so I want to I don't want to mess with this this metal I just want to take that off so I could sandblast it but it's going to give it a different texture that I don't want. So one of my Patreon supporters told me about muric acid. If you're not one of my Patreon supporters the link's always in the top of the description just check it out dollar a month it'd be great I'd appreciate it but they said to use muric acid. Muric acid is for uh, is for concrete and masonry, removing mortar from bricks. It's I don't know what it is. Wear chemical resistance gloves, chemical splash goggles. Oh, this stuff's bad. It's bad. And then to make it rust, I read on Google you use hydrogen peroxide and salt. But then I also read somewhere something about some vinegar. But I also watched Wrangler Star's video the other day and he used vinegar to take rust off a piece of wood or a piece of uh, a metal. He did an axe handle on the planer. It's going to be a little trial and error here, but I'm, I'm pretty sure from what I Googled, Google is, Google is never wrong. Now this stuff is no joke. I'm scared of this stuff. 
I don't know what it is going to do. Obviously, you want to wear all safety precautions, rubber gloves, eye protection. I'm just going to wear ear protection from all the haters. I just don't want to end up with hands that look like Marty Rainey's. My resume, I'll show it to you right now. I don't want my resume to, to read stupid. Don't do that. Don't sniff that. That will kill you. Peanut, go outside and play in traffic. Okay, I won't do that. Peanut, don't really do that, please. Oh, God. What am I doing? Let's see what this does. Oh, it smells chemically. It smells like sulfur. He's right. Look at it. It's taking it off. Wow, that stuff's toxic stinking. My God. So instead of getting a sandblaster, you could use... It's so hard for me to say. Muratic acid. I have to read it to say it. My man, where were you three weeks ago? That's cool. So I like how it took off the uh, the scale on the, the metal. So what I'm gonna do is clean the actual backsplash with some uh, lacquer thinner or mineral spirit, get the oil and grease off of it. And then I'm gonna soak them with the uh, muratic acid. And then we'll figure out how to clean it because that was kind of hard to clean. But I think maybe this will work, but we'll see. We'll keep trying. So just a little lacquer thinner. Probably should have let it dry first. Man, that stuff is foul smelling. We might have to do that a couple times. I mean, I need to leave that fan on because there's some toxic shit happening here. That's for sure. So this took about two hours to get the, uh, the scale off. I will say that the uh, muriatic, muriatic, am I saying it right? Muriatic acid did do good, but it's definitely a, I would say a toxic chemical. I would say it's pretty toxic. Poison causes severe burns to eyes, skin irritation, maybe fatal if swallowed. Vapors are harmful, contains hydrochloric acid, avoid contact with everything, first aid, just shoot yourself, contact, flush, you know, the, the normal stuff, contact, poison control, don't let your kids drink it, that type of stuff. It did get all the scale off, and I have been washing myself, like every time I touch it, I should have wore gloves for sure. Um, this stuff is meant for masonry, and if you ever look at a mason's hands, they're really fucked up. The, that, that clip that I showed earlier in the video, probably, Marty, he was a mason. That's how he did his thing. He was a mason. And so I think those chemical burns on his hands are from muriatic acid. I can't, don't quote me on that, but I would, I would say most likely. So it did clean this so it was gray. It was, like, beautiful. And then I took lacquer thinner. And I poured lacquer thinner on it and cleaned it. It created a lot of heat. I'm not a chemist or anything, but I think I made something like fatal. Like if you breathe that stuff, it might be very toxic. So it might be a bad idea, but it did put this really sick looking green color into it. It almost, it looks like, like that aged copper almost. It looks really, really cool. Some of you really might like this. How many times are you going to say really? A lot, because it's pretty cool. But that's not what I'm going for. I mean, I don't know what I'm going for. This is more of what I'm going for. This is not finished, but that, that texture, maybe. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. So I have every dirty rag that I have. The, all the ones that have oil on them, they're really, really dirty. But I'm going to take them, and I'm just going to lay them out in a wrinkling-like thing. I want wrinkles. Ah, what is on that one? That one's nasty. Maybe we shouldn't use that one. This is some Pinterest type shit right here, what I'm doing. It's just gonna, just gonna fluff it up, you know? You just want some wrinkles in it. Okay, you see what I did? Because I don't know what I'm doing, but in my head, I feel like this will be cool looking. What these wrinkly rags are gonna do in my head, what I think they're gonna do is create more rust in some spots, less rust in other spots. So it's gonna be more of a wrinkly, like leather type look. So I did go online and did some research about how to rust metal and uh, a lot of them were saying use hydrogen peroxide and salt and maybe soap or something. Uh, I found the hydrogen, hydrogen peroxide did just fine. Uh, it, it does create a, a smoke, so it's probably toxic. Just don't do any of this shit, please. 
God. Like, if I fall over tonight. So now we're just going to. Really don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Burst into flames. You see how it's browning it automatically? There's smoke coming off. You can't see it, but there's smoke happening. Oh, this is cool. This is like mad scientist type shit. This is like right up my fucking alley. It smells like chlorine, which I believe that's that's bad. Any type of chlorine odor means you're you're dying. Well, building this house is definitely knocked 10, 20 years off my life, that's for sure. You're crazy. <laughs> okay, you're on drugs. I'm gonna let it sit for I don't know. So it's been about 20 minutes. I've been checking it every once in a while. I lift it up, and I think it's pretty, maybe cool. I don't know. I'm gonna take them all off and see what we're what we're working with here. Oops. What in the f am I doing? I mean, it looks cooler on camera than it does in person. That's the first. The green though is really cool. There's a haze in the air. I'll we'll put that on there. I think my art teacher would be so proud of me. You know, art was the only class that I ever got an award in. I did really like geometry, but my geometry teacher in high school was probably the worst teacher I ever had in my life. Oh, he was horrible. I didn't use salt. All I did was use hydrogen peroxide to get it to rust. You getting woozy, man. It looks all right, right? I think it does. I think that was what I was going for, maybe. Oh. I'm gonna clear coat these now, so I just wanna clean these off. I'm just gonna use a broom, a little brush, very gently, because some of those rags were pretty dirty. Just wanna get some of that, the breasts off. So I'm just gonna use some clear enamel and cover it up. Now I know you guys are probably thinking like, what are you doing, like how do you know what you're doing? And I really, I've been testing it on this piece right here. So this was the piece that I started out with that uh, muriatic acid. I did muriatic acid right here, and then I put the hydrogen peroxide on there, and then I realized the towel gave it this cool texture. Um, but I also used salt on this, and then this whole section hadn't been clean with the muriatic acid, so it's very dark and scary looking. This is pretty cool looking, but you know, you can get different finishes with this process. I mean, you do different things, just slight little different things, you're gonna get a different finish. I've clear coated this section, so, I mean, I don't know, if you're thinking of doing something like this, you're never going to get the, like a, a consistent finish on it unless you do it all the same way, which I did on those pieces. That looks awesome. Holy cow. Wow. If I do ever have a woman living with me, probably not, you know, who would date this? But if I ever do, they're probably, you know, I'm not clean in any way, but they might be clean. And so they might like clean this backsplash a lot. And so it might wear the finish off. So the more of this I put on, the less I'll have to do repairs later. So many coats, but damn. All right, let's go install these, but I gotta do more work. So I'm gonna be gluing the backsplash to the wall because I don't want any fasteners like exposed. There's gonna be stuff that's holding it on the edges, but the glue is gonna really hold the middle and I don't want it to be like bouncing off. Like when you touch it, I don't want it to feel cheap and poorly made. So it's, I'm gonna use a good construction adhesive to fasten it to the wall. But the back of the backsplash got really rusty when I did that whole finishing process. So I'm gonna use a like basically a Brillo pad on crack. It's really brutal. I'm gonna put that on my angle grinder. Grind the back of it. I'm not going to grind the whole thing so it's like perfect, but I'm just going to do it enough so that I can put glue in certain spots. Oh God. So I'm using a little PL construction adhesive. This is good for metal to wood. It's good for a lot of different things, but it'll work for me. So I unscrewed all these outlets, as well as put tape on them, because I didn't want to cut the power on them, so I don't get electrocuted. It's the wrong thing. You are not prepared. 
negative 10 points. I was so prepared, but I was not. Good way to drop the ball. Ow, that hurts when you punch it. It hurts. So I'm just putting a couple screws on this portion to hold it in against the wall. Putting them into the, uh, the sill kind of, a little bit below. And then I'm going to put a couple angled ones down here. Using the head kind of to hold it in place. I will pull all these screws out when I'm done. I got this piece of one by right here. I'm going to screw it up here and I'm going to screw it down there. And then I want to take some shims and put it in behind. But I kind of want to put the shims in while I'm screwing it. Otherwise I wouldn't be able to get them into uh, down behind it. Man, was I breathing heavy? I'm sorry if I was breathing a little too heavy. <sighs> Don't do drugs, kids. Unless they're good ones. And send me some. I'm kidding. It was a joke. On this piece, I did test fit it before. And I put two screws down at the bottom of it. So I can set those on the screw. And I know it, it'll go right where it's, it's sitting. And then I'll do the exact same thing with these, these braces. I'll put one, two, maybe three on it. As well as some more shims. And then, and then we'll see what it looks like when it's done. So after I did this whole project, I went online and I looked at pictures of like rusted backsplashes. And I found that under cabinet lighting really made these things stand out and made them look so much nicer. So uh, my range vent does have a light in it. So hopefully it'll, it'll make this look a lot better. I know on camera it doesn't, doesn't look great. So just a disclaimer, if you're going to be using that muriatic acid, Use it outside. Don't have it near any other types of unprotected metal. Muriatic acid, just the vapors itself, will rust any raw metal. If it doesn't have any type of protective coating on it, it's going to rust. It's going to flash rust. Uh, so a lot of my tools ended up getting rust all over them. But set it up outside and do it away from anything that you could possibly care about. But I do hope you enjoyed this video. I think it turned out pretty cool looking. Once I put that under cabinet lighting in though, it's going to look so much better. And then also, I was probably going to replace all these light switches to brown with uh, like an aged bronze cover plate on top of it. So it'll fit. I think the whole house, I'm going to do that. Or at least a dark color. Because, yeah, probably. I don't know. We'll see. But thanks so much for watching. If you're new to my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you like what you saw, make sure you hit that thumbs up. If you really like my videos, if you're part of that 1,000, 2,000 people that watch my videos on a regular basis, turn on that uh, notification button so you'll get notified. It's right next to the subscribe button. There's a little bell. Just click on that. You'll get notified by email. So I, I get texts. Not texts, but like the app will, will tell me that somebody posted a video that I get notified for. I follow about six or seven people that I get that for. So check that out. Uh, check me out on Patreon if you want to help support this channel. And I will see you next week. Why weren't you in the video? Listen, dude, just because you were trying to kill yourself with all them chemicals doesn't mean I wanted to go with you. Pinnit, you don't want to be in the video? I need you to be in the video. No, I don't want to be in the video. Pinnit, come back. Well, thank you for watching, though. Goodbye.